The order of the heavens, angels, and souls around the Trinity is like the order of the spheres around the center. Above the four elements, which are subject to change according to substance and quality, there are the seven heavens of the planets. It is not their substance, but somehow a certain quality or disposition of theirs that is changed. Since their motion is almost erratic, the eighth heaven, whose motion is more orderly, is placed above them. But that heaven has two kinds of motion. That is, from the east to the west and back again, and also at least two qualities, namely, radiance and splendor. Therefore, one is raised up from that heaven to the crystalline one, whose motion is simple from the east and whose quality is also simple, radiance. Since, however, its status is superior in motion, and its light is superior in radiance, thus from this heaven one is raised up to the Empyrean, which is entirely immutable and utterly brilliant. The Empyrean heaven is well suited to the immutability and light of the Trinity. The remaining nine heavens are situated to the nine orders of angels. There are three hierarchies of divine spirits, just as Dionysius the Areopagite sees it, each of which itself contains three orders. Each order, as some theologians calculate, contains many legions. They reckon that a legion consists of 6,666 units and that there are as many legions in each order as the legion itself has units. But I agree more with Dionysius when he says that there is such a multitude of those spirits that it exceeds the human capacity to calculate. The one and only essence of God is extended into a threefold number of persons. The number of the three hierarchies and that of the nine angelic orders, just like the number of spiritual spheres, encompasses this number of three persons. The first hierarchy is attributed to the Father, the second to the Son, the third to the Spirit. In the first, the seraphim contemplate the Father in and of himself. The cherubim contemplate the Father inasmuch as he begets the Son. The thrones contemplate the Father, who begets the Spirit with the Son. In the second hierarchy, the dominions contemplate the Son in and of himself. The virtues contemplate the Son, who emanates from the Father, and the powers contemplate the Son, who begets the Spirit with the Father. In the third hierarchy, the principalities contemplate the spirit in and of itself. The archangels contemplate the spirit that comes from the Father and the Son. And the angels contemplate the spirit that proceeds from the Son and the Father. Although each, as we have said, observes some things in one manner and others in another, especially God, each nevertheless beholds the whole Trinity and everything in it. As Dionysius says, they have yet another difference because the first hierarchy draws their clarity, liquor, solely from the Trinity, the second by way of the first, and the third by way of the second and the first. Likewise, the seraphim examine the order of divine providence in the goodness of God as an end. The cherubim observe it in the essence of God as a form and lastly, the thrones observe it in and of itself. The remaining orders now descend to perform works, but the dominions, like architects, command what the rest carry out. The virtues are concerned with and move the heavens, and, like instruments of God, they cooperate to perform miracles. The powers ward off the things that seem able to upset the order of divine governance. The rest of the orders descend even further to human affairs. 
The principalities take care of public affairs, nations, leaders, and magistrates. Archangels direct the divine worship of each and every one and take part in sacred rites. Angels order minor things, and each one attends to an individual as a guardian. In the same way there are nine orders of angels. Thus the souls of the blessed are separated into nine orders. For as Plato says in the Timaeus, each soul ascends to the order and the spirit, just as to its own star, to which it rendered itself similar in its lifetime. Although our souls, while they are in our bodies, produce the fourth hierarchy under the moon, nevertheless, because of the free movement of their rational nature, they can ascend through all the benign spirits and descend through all the maligned ones, especially since they occupy the middle of all things, and therefore contain certain qualities of all things in themselves. Therefore, it happens that the progression of souls is most expansive. The moon is the boundary of the Elysian confines of life and death, as the Pythagoreans hold, whatever is under the moon is allotted to death and the dead, where there are as many degrees of punishment according to the throngs of malign spirits as there are rewards in the heavens according to the orders of benign spirits. For the Styx flows between the wretched nine times and surrounds them, just as the Elysian fields nine times embraces the blessed.